Hello and welcome to Full Throttle. Now I would like to talk to you about the Ferrari 458. For you see, I drove it last year, or maybe two years ago, before I started this channel. And I thought it was one of Ferrari's all-time greatest cars. So, when they announced that they were replacing it with this, the 488 GTB, I didn't even know how they were going to do that. But the question is though, one way that they've done it is a change in the engine. For you see that is a turbocharged four V8. But the question is, does the turbocharge does the turbocharger make this 488 GTB better? Or worse than the 458. Well, I took it. Well, to find out, I took it to Norway to find out. Hello, you join me here on the Norwegian mountains where I am driving this, the 488 GTB, which is kind of a big deal for Ferrari. Not only because it's the successor to the 458. And not only was that car successful, which that has to compete with as well, but it's changing the philosophy of Ferrari. Gone is the naturally aspirated 4.5 liter V8 from the 458, and in its place a, is a downsized direct injection 3.9 liter twin turbocharged flat plane crank V8. It's more efficient but it's also massively more powerful. How powerful you may ask? The 458 had 562 brake horsepower. This 661 brake horsepower. And as a result of that, this can get from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds flat. Not to 120 miles an hour, it takes about 8.3 seconds, which is really incredible. The top speed on this car is 205 miles an hour which makes this one of the fastest Ferraris ever made. Now, driving this car for only a bit, I am saying that this is an automotive masterpiece. What the engine lacks in character composed to the other V8, it makes up for with an outrageous performance of drivability that no matter what gear you find yourself in or the speed you're traveling at, no point does the 488 make you f wait even a nanosecond when you decide to call on all 661 horsepower and about 560 feet pounds of torque? Let's see. The chassis in it is sublime, melding unexpected levels of comfort with flappable control, unflappable control, and crystal clear communication as the pace quickens you and, and you start to build up to exploit, exploiting the phenomenal performance on offer. There are moments of pure genius, and I think the steering and the chassis are simply fabulous. There is a shade more understeer that you find it than you'd find in the 458 Speciality, and such is the torque that can oversteer that can spike that come in spikes if you don't finesse the throttle inputs. But it's still the adjustability that sets the Ferrari apart from the 650S and the Huracan. Got charged two competitors. Each of these supercars offers its thrill, but the super fluid, super clinical McLaren and the lockdown Lamborghini never allow the dri driver to into the experience fully as the 488 GTB does. Now, the ride and handling definitely haven't lost anything in the mo in the move to turbocharging. It has a beautiful balance, huge grip. It is incredibly forgiving at times, even if you make the slightest or biggest mistakes, and is miraculously comfortable in terms of ride, in terms of ride quality. It is economical, actually, for a Ferrari. It is surprisingly economical. I mean, I been actually I drove in the city not too long ago before it's filming, and I actually got. A combined 25 miles per gallon which is incredible that makes this one of the most 
economical for eyes ever. As for the price, well, at £182,000, it is actually reasonably priced for a car that, that is this good. The design of the Ferrari, which is beautiful, has been sculpted in a wind tunnel and is aerodynamic and is one is like the 458s before it, which makes it more aerodynamic. The interior and tech has a, it has a proper sports car driving position, low with great forward visibility, but it's comfortable as well. Admittedly, there are some messy components, elements here and there, but it actually is <laughs> it actually is quite quite good. It's quite clean and well organized. Uh. The reach of the engine. Actually, the variable torque management system has many benefits according to Ferrari. First, it's that it gives the engine an exciting delivery, which it does, and rapidly builds towards peak power, then giving a heat. Overall, on the road like this, the Ferrari is brilliant. It drives well. Over like bumpy roads, it is surprisingly more comfortable than the 458, despite being a massive turbocharged engine. Which, uh, okay, on the road for this, I'd say this is better than a 458 Italia. And that is saying something. Even when you got a knock like that, it's still comfortable. So that's how it's like on the road. But, you may be wondering, how is it on a track? Well, you know what? Let's find out, shall we? As we concession right now. I am here on the racetrack and the first thing that you start to notice about this car is its ride quality. I mean there's a sort of witchcraft that accompanies its ride quality. In the softer of the two modes, Ferrari's bumpy road mode, the ride quality is completely at odds with your expectations of a 661 horsepower twin turbocharged V8 mid engine supercar. The way it smothers imperfections in the road surface is surreal, especially since especially so since it has no effect on how the 488 drives. The key to the 488's dynamics is Ferrari's limited slip slide co control software, SSC2. Now integrated with the chassis active dampers, as well as the F1 track stability system and an EDIF as before, the system is optimized to improve body control and increase stability according to Ferrari. And I can say for certainty that it does work. I mean, driving this, you can't sort of slip. It sticks to the ground as well, and actually, when you're hooning it about, when you're pushing this car to the limits, it still, still sticks, but it's also still so comfortable. As you tense and wait for the sickening crash of the underfloor, headbutting the tarmac, the 488 rides it out as if nothing was there. As you turn into a corner, there's just the right degree of body roll across the car, under breaking the nose dives at the expected rate, when you hook up the hook those rear tires, the back end squats, just enough to prepare you for the onslaught. It's such an engaging and fulfilling chassis that after every drive, you just want to jump back in and experience it all over again, which honestly, in this, I don't want to get out of this because this is such a fantastic and enjoyous experience. Even like this, who needed about, it's still enjoyable. It's still enjoyable. Now, the only criticism that I could actually the gearbox, the seven-speed dual clutch. I want to talk the gearbox is a seven-speed dual clutch system, which is updated from the 458, and now features the variable torque management first experience in the California T. Honestly, it's the perfect companion for the. 3.9 liter V8. The pilots require just the right amount of weight applied to them to shift up or down. Not so much that an upshift requires the same thought and physical process as a conventional manual shift. If that was the case, we'd be demanding a return to an open manual gate. Not so light that an air middle index finger brushing the left hand paddle could result in two ratios drop in the corner. The only criticism that I can aim at the gearbox is the shorter ratios. I mean, you can rev up to 9,000 in a 458, but this is only about like 6,500. 
In order to maximize the engine's power and torque delivery, the 488 is short geared as a Porsche Cayman is long. It doesn't take anything away from the experience, but it can make for a busy drivetrain and even busier finger index fingers. The direct injection V8 has compression ratio of 9.4 to 1 and uses to you don't want to know, know about that. What you do want to know is that the changing of the gear, you can change the gears to 0.8 of a millisecond. The it the Italia's Fiat responds faster still at 0.6 seconds rather than the 0.8, but thereafter the 488 delivers vastly more better acceleration 20 to 25 percent more in the lower gears 30 percent more in fifth and sixth and 40 percent more in seventh which is actually which is actually a great and good thing now for the price now for the pr now the price yes actually yes all this costs about hundred and eighty two thousand pounds which is good but considering that we have to talk about its competitors which is which is the Lamborghini Huracan and the McLaren 650s Ferrari will argue its cars are beyond compare but I personally feel that the 650s matches the 488 GTP pretty much head-on the 488 actually the 650 costs more though but it is it does offer a different approach to a junior supercar and one and closer to it closer to home Lamborghini offer a 100 actually Lamborghini's 187 thousand pound Huracan is the normally aspirated version it's 5.2 liter V10 producing the wildest most scandalating 602 brake horsepower it's in it's an immense po powertrain, and, it, and because it doesn't have the torque-heavy delivery of the turbocharged engines, it feels more—it feels even more electric, even more live, even more extreme. But despite this, the Huracan is just too plain, a bit too boring. Whereas the actually the McLaren, again, boring, more technical, which I don't really like. McLarens have always been too technical, which, for a car, is brilliant. But it uh, it's not very good as a driver's vehicle. Now, honestly, overall the 458 went out on a high, but in this new 488, they've produced another hit straight out of the box. One that also provides huge promise and anticipation as to how the latest for rise go. Now for the final verdict I give this a full hell 10 out of 10. It is a masterpiece. If you have the needs buy this car. Now that's how it is. Now that's my verdict. That's my opinion. Now we'll find out how fast it is once we take this to our test driver who is waiting for us down at Brands Hatch. So let's find out how 